Is caffeine a good way to self-medicate ADHD symptoms? That's what I want to discuss in this video. Come and join me for a chat. Welcome to day three of my one day at a time challenge, making a video for as many days on YouTube as I can sustain. I've, if you saw my video yesterday, you'll know that I was pretty crashed out after a pretty lousy night's sleep. I was diagnosed with ADHD back in January 2023 and it makes a lot of sense, but one of the things that I've always struggled with, although not as bad as I do these days, I have to be honest, is sleep. My sleep is erratic. I find it very hard to get to bed <laughs> in the first place. And then when I do get to bed, sometimes it takes me a while to sleep. So I thought about a month ago, it was probably caffeine related. So I gave up caffeine to see if that would help my sleep because I've read lots of things about caffeine and ADHD and there seems to be a really, just a, a big divide amongst the, the experts and the, the scientists out there as to whether caffeine helps or hinders ADHD. So caffeine is a stimulant and ADHD is basically a dysregulation in the uptake of dopamine. Dopamine being a hormone, a neurotransmitter that stimulates us into action. And it's also the, the hormone that rewards us when, and makes us feel good along with other things like serotonin and various other hormones but at its very fundamental core <laughs> um, ADHD is a dysregulation in the uptake of dopamine so what that means is our body is often trying really really hard to overcompensate for this lack of dopamine which is why medication for ADHD is based around stimulants and that for me sounded really weird when I first was diagnosed with ADHD and they talked about putting me on stimulant meds. I was like, you don't want to be stimulating this brain. <laughs> it's on overdrive all of the time. But I was completely uninformed really. So basically the reason our brains are hyperactive is because we're constantly striving and searching for that dopamine to get some kind of regulation in there. And stimulant meds create that stimulation for us. So it actually can slow everything down, the physical and the mental hyperactivity. Now, I am just gonna say right now, I am not a medical practitioner, I'm not a psychologist, a psychiatrist. I'm just a woman with ADHD who's trying really hard to understand what the hell is going on in my head so please don't take this video as any kind of medical advice at all. That's, it, it is not. But I have, I think, come to realize that one of my core beliefs is that we are all different. Our biological makeup, whilst it might look pretty similar under a, an x-ray, we're all very different and therefore there's no one size fits all. I think I've found this very much in the past working with women um, around the menopause space. You can't say this is how you're going to experience your menopause any more than you can say this is how you're going to experience ADHD or I guess autism or any other neurodivergence. We are all different and that means that we're all going to respond differently to treatments and ways of managing these, 
conditions. So I, I say I'm not an expert, I'm not trying to be an expert here, but what I did want to do in this video is just share my own experience in the hope that maybe it will help in some way, or at least reassure you that if your experience is different to what the textbooks tell you it should be, that actually that's okay, <laughs> because maybe the textbooks haven't studied you <laughs> in particular, and therefore your response and your reaction to the advice is going to be different. So let's get back to caffeine. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. I've been Googling a lot. I've been trying to find scholarly articles, um, studies, good, good quality studies, you know, randomized studies. And there, there does seem to be a divide among the experts as to whether or not caffeine is a good alternative to stimulant medications or not. And this has been my experience. So I was put on to um, stimulants after I was diagnosed. I took Concerta for a little while with a gradually increasing dosage. And when I didn't get on with that, they put me on to Elvance. I think one of them is a, I, can, I cannot remember the terminology. I think one's amphetamine based and the other one is something else. I can't remember. Um, both of which really screwed, screwed with me. Um, I was getting very, very bad heart palpitations. I was, um, I didn't notice any big difference in sort of focus or anything like that. I felt a bit numb. Uh, almost like they were suppressing all of my mental creativity as opposed to stimulating anything. So I also had some real jitters and I never had that before, despite the fact that I've been drinking caffeine since I was a kid and I've never really had that the coffee buzz, the caffeine buzz that people talk about, that kind of sense of, you know, when, you, when you're tired or whatever and you, you get that buzz and you get the jitters and you feel wired. Never had any of that. I could never relate to it. So when I started taking ADHD meds and I was getting those jitters, that's all I can imagine is that's what it feels like if you're neurotypical and you have too much caffeine or if you're very sensitive to caffeine. I never had that. So I don't know, I, I, I'm not trying to make any sort of scientific hypotheses here, just relaying my experience. But my sleep has gradually got worse and worse. I think that's probably a lot to do with lowering estrogen levels um, as I've gone through perimenopause, into menopause and now into postmenopause. So my estrogen levels are low and estrogen and dopamine are both neurotransmitters. Um, I think um, from what I understand, uh, est estrogen, estrogen, estrogen helps to sort of modulate dopamine. So when one's out of sync, the other kind of uh, gets out of whack as well. So I think my sleep has been affected by both my dopamine dysregulation due to ADHD and my lowering estrogen levels due to menopause. So my sleep over the last three or four years has gradually got way, way worse. But for me, a lot of it is getting to bed. It's actually getting myself up off the sofa and going to bed. Once I'm there, often I can sleep well. I fall asleep quite quickly. Other times I don't. <laughs> I, Yesterday, if you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that it still took me about three quarters of an hour to get to sleep after I got to bed at half past three in the morning. But what I have found is that caffeine doesn't seem to make a haperth of difference. Haperth, that's half pennies worth for anybody outside of the UK. It doesn't seem to make any difference to me. So, but I, I didn't really know that for sure. 
and I wanted to do a bit of an experiment because I think one thing that we have got control over is getting a better understanding of our own body and how we respond and react. Can you believe? I'm just going to show you this. There's a man over there with a ride on. Oh, uh, how dare he <laughs> when I'm trying to record a video. Um, yeah, I think we have to be our own scientists with our own body. We have to get curious and become more self-aware of what works for us because quite often the advice that we're going to get from professionals isn't going to be right for us. And I, I know I was guilty of this, you know, I've been a health coach for quite a, a number of years now and I would be talking about the impact of caffeine, how it can affect your sleep and, you know, not, not taking al uh, alcohol, <laughs> not having caffeine too close to bedtime and, and, and all of that. I, I talked about the, the, the theory, if you like, the, the common advice that's being given out. And yet my experience never matched what I was sharing. And I also had a little bit of a fraud around that because, you know, if you're teaching something, you want to believe it wholeheartedly. So I was teaching what I'd been taught, but I wasn't experiencing that in my own life. Anyway, about a, probably a month, a month and a half ago, I made the decision to cut out caffeine. And I have to say the first three days were hideous. I had awful headaches, didn't feel great, but I stuck with it. Uh, switched to decaffeinated tea. I don't drink a huge amount of coffee. I'm a tea girl. Um, but if I go out um, and have dinner, and quite like a, a nice Americano or something like that afterwards, uh, always a nice strong black coffee. So if I did have one, I was having decaffeinated. And after a few days of getting over that initial withdrawal, I was fine, but I didn't see any noticeable improvement in my, um, in anything really. Um, I, I would say I felt less focused. I've been a little bit all over the place, but there are other things that have been happening in life that could account for that. But I haven't seen any noticeable improvement in my sleep at all. In fact, if anything, I would say I've seen a deterioration in my sleep, which is quite counterintuitive and it goes against all of the advice that I've been given. So last night, well yesterday, because I was feeling so exhausted after a really late night and a, a pretty lousy night's sleep and about four hours, three and a half, four hours sleep in total, yesterday I thought to hell with it, I'm going to have caffeine. So I started my day with a caffeinated tea and then had another cup of tea. I had a coffee in the afternoon. I also had a Pepsi Max, which I know has lots of other health issues around it, but it's my one of my vices and I've really missed it for the last month and a half. And, and then I had a, a big mug of tea. I mean, a big mug of tea around about an hour before I went to bed. I went up to bed just after half past 11, very early for me, and I was asleep like a baby in no time. And I slept right through till eight o'clock this morning. Now that surely goes against everything that we're taught about the stimulant effect of caffeine and the fact that you know, it can impact your sleep. Well, it did impact my sleep, but it seems to have impacted it in a good way. So I don't know. I don't know what the um, answer is. I don't know what the truth around it is. As I say, I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just re sort of retelling my experience. But I'd love to know in the comments, especially if you have ADHD, what's your experience with caffeine? Does it help? Does it not help? Um, you know, today I'm up, I'm about, I'm, I've come out for a, a walk in our, we've got a lovely park. Let me just show you this while I'm on. We've got this really lovely park. We're, we're very lucky around here. We've got woods right on the doorstep. And then we've got this nice park with a, a sort of a play park there for the youngsters. And we've got, it's a, got a big lake. I'll show you in a moment as well as I walk back. Um, but I've come out. I've come out, I'm up and ready. Uh, I've done some work this morning. 
I've got my gym kit on. I'm going to go for a workout at midday. I've got a coaching client this afternoon. I've got a group coaching session in my membership and I'm dancing this evening and I've got so much energy today. And the only thing I can put that down to, I think, is caffeine yesterday and it's perked me up. So I don't know, I'm really, really genuinely interested to know your experiences. So please do let me know in the comments. I'm about to uh, go and go for, finish my walk. I've got to pick up my wedding ring uh, because I had it re-dipped, I think they call it. It's white gold and it had lost all of its whiteness and turned yellow again. So I'm just picking that up. That's been um, going through the process of, of being refreshed. Then I'm going to grab a coffee, do a little bit of work. I've got my iPad with me. And then I've got the gym booked for 12 o'clock at lunchtime. I've no idea if I've just repeated myself or not. I've got so many distractions with tractors over there and lawnmowers over there and people walking past. And I, I, I like a squirrel. Um, my head's all over the place. Anyway, I'm going to leave you and I will talk to you again for day four of my day at a time challenge. Take care.